Danny Flex in here for seconds out. Delighted to be joined once again by former amateur star, unbeaten professional. Let's not forget Master Baker, Michael Conlon. Yep. Mick, how you doing? All good, Danny. All good, mate. Glad to hear just it. Just over close to the fight now, so I'm just ready to fucking fight. You know what I mean? You look very relaxed, I must say. Yeah, of course. Of <laughs> course, always. Sunday, Sunday night, sparring on Mars. So you got to be chilling in bed, getting ready to go to sleep. It must feel good to be back out again. I know it's been, what, eight months since the the fight with Taguchi? Yeah. Um, what, in August? Yeah, so eight months. And you've got a, an on-form fighter in Balutu who's made a recent habit of beating Irish fighters. So a very sellable yeah. fight as well. Yeah, definitely sellable fight. The guy who's coming to win. Um, confidence is going to be absolutely booming um, after beating the two Irish guys. So... You know, I'm 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 excited for it. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I believe you know he's the type of opponent which will bring it the best of me. And uh, you know, I'm just I'm, I'm I can't wait to get in there. I'm ready to go. I could go in the morning. So you know, everything's good. Is it at the uh, Super Bantam Championship limit or just over? Yes, yes, oh, Championship limit, Championship limit. So we're all good on track. Everything is perfect at the minute. What have you had to change in terms of making weight from feather down to super bantam? I mean, it's not a big difference, but what have you had to yeah. tweak? Not much, not much. Um, you know, just kind of tightened a little bit up on, on, on my carry and take through a camp, but there hasn't been there hasn't been much of manus. It's been it's been quite simple. Um, keep up the training, keep doing what I'm doing, and keep eating how I'm eating. So. You know, just probably a little bit less of intake of, of, of proteins and stuff for a camp. Um, but other than that, not really, not really much of change. Good stuff. What's the mood been like in the camp? Not just for yourself, but generally. Obviously, we yeah. know Josh, who you're quite close with, suffered yeah. painful defeat. Maybe not so much physically, but certainly emotionally yeah. painful uh, against Avanesia not too long ago. How, how's yeah. the whole kind of team responded to that? Uh, listen, it's responded well. You know, Shannon's went and won a world title. He's went and got wins. You know, it's it's it is what it is. It's boxing. These things happen. People lose. You know, every day in life. So you know, if it's if you're losing in sport, you no, know, it is what it is. It's a small blip in his in his career. But you know, I think everybody as fighters um, should do have to think selfishly and uh, and forget about you know moods and and how people or other people will be feeling over a loss and just focus on yourself and trying to get your own win. How do you feel in sparring at this weight? Obviously you're going to be over the, the weight at the yeah. moment, but compared to where you are at the same stage for a featherweight fight. You know what? I feel stronger. I feel fitter. Um, I feel all around better and that's no joke. And I'm sparring heavier guys too. I actually feel stronger. Um, during it this weight, I feel like I'm punching way harder. Um, 100% I'm predicting a knockout. I know I'm going to knock this guy clean out. And I believe I'll do it in, in good fashion too. So um, I just feel like every, everything is just, is, is com- I'm, I'm coming into my own kind of, I'm, I feel like I'm punching way harder. So I'm excited to show that. That's something I'm really excited about. Um, but am I putting it down to the weight or am I putting it down to punching with better technique I don't know um, we'll see on the night but you know I, I've been sparring much later than I ever sparred and I'm flying so you know I feel physically strong even against big guys even being down lower than what I usually am I feel physically very strong and I feel like I'm punching very hard so um, I'm excited I'm just excited I, I, I'm not lying I just I wish it could be tomorrow so I could get in there and go now what would you make of Baluta generally? I know you're very confident of getting a victory, but what do you like about him strength-wise and, and what do you, you see the opportunities? He's a very good fighter. Um, you know, someone who's caused two upsets. He he throws, you know, very aggressively. Um, sometimes he does it to an extent where he doesn't know why he's doing it. And, you know, he does it too much for me, but um, he's got... You know, uh, an unpredictable style. He's, you've seen him boxing the back foot. You've seen him boxing the front foot. So, you know, he can't change it up. Um, and also his confidence. I'm loving his confidence. The minute he's, he, he's booming with confidence, he believes he's going to go in there and do me. So, you know, that's always a good thing. I always I always want an opponent to, who's going to come to fight and going to come take my head off. And I've, I've been asking for it from, from day one. So, um, 
yeah, it's 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 a good fight. It's a good fight. He's a good fighter, so I'm I'm looking forward to going in there and putting on a show against him. We should say it's on the 30th of April um, at York Hall, yep. I believe. Uh, yeah. On the same card as Sonny Edwards' World Title Challenge, which yep. a lot of people are looking forward to. Um, yeah. Bob Arum, your US promoter, recently talked about your future and said after Baluta, towards the end of the year, he'd like to get you in with um, Stephen Fulton for the WBO yep. title, your WBO number one, of course. Yeah. But since then, it's been announced that Fulton is going to fight the winner of Luis Neri and Brandon Figueroa. I know, I know, I know. It's it's, kind of it's so it seems. In the works. It seems very dumb. Um, it seems very dumb that he's fighting a winner of something instead of you know maybe having a fight in between that and then going against me after um, or having me in August. You know, fight me in August. I'll fight him in August. Um, see him having to wait to September. But you know, I could see that fight happening. Um, that f- if he fights the winner of that one, that'll happen September time, and then the winner of that either way will have ninety days to face me. So. Um, I still think I'll fight either Fulton or Neary or possibly if, if Neary wins and wants to keep the BC and, and vague hits the video, I could fight Danny Roman. So um, there's there's three there's three names. Danny Roman, Stephen Fulton and uh, Lewis Neary are, are, are the three names who could possibly fight for a title at the end of the year. But you know, I do still believe I'll fight for the belt. I would love it to happen in August um, if Stephen Fulton you know, I'll leave all that talk until after. If I'm honest, I, I said I'll just speak about this stuff after. But um, yeah, it, it's it's a bit weird. He's fighting the winner of something before that fight has even happened. So um, I suppose it's a good way to keep you know things on one side of the street, as they like to say. So uh, I don't know. It's it's a bit annoying, but it is what it is. It sounds like you fancy Neary to come out on top against Figueroa. Who, who do you like out of Fulton and Neary? Because that's presumably who you'll end up facing. It's a very good fight. It's a very good fight. I slightly lean towards Fulton just because he'll be the bigger man. Um, but Neary's, Neary's the danger man too. Like, you know, he's, he's come up from Bandaweight. He's done good damage of Bandaweight. He's come to Sir Bandaweight and he's, you know, he's looking to stamp his authority. So, if he comes through Figueroa, which I think he will, um, it's a really interesting matchup. Um, both fantastic fighters. Um, all three, all three of them guys, Brown Figueroa, you know, uh, Lewis Neary and Stephen Fulton, all, all fantastic fighters. So the Super Bantam division with red hot. Um, and if one of them didn't happen, I'll fight Murajon at Medallia for his titles. I've already beat him in the amateurs. I'll fight him. Uh, beat him in the world final. Imagine the the world final happening again for the world title. So you know, um, that would be something that be I would be interested in too. So you know, it's 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 a very very hot division and one you know I, I'm happy to be in the, in the, in the middle of. And although Fulton's decision may seem a little strange now, yeah. you, it could end up with you fighting for two world titles instead of one. Yep, exactly, exactly. So you could be fighting for, you know, the BC and the BO, and uh, and you know, that would be a dream come true. You know what I mean? My my first world title challenge is for unification, and you know, I, I go and snap them two belts, and then I'll I'll, I'll go for another speed of belt if 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 we could get the like medallion I've won on. So you know, that would be that would be fantastic. I just want to get your um, views on Carl Frampton's retirement. Of course, uh, brave challenge against Jamel Herring for that yeah. world title at third weight. Didn't quite get the job done, unfortunately. And yeah. sailed off into the sunset after an incredible career. Just what are your views yeah. of what he's achieved? Yes, and he's, he's going down as Ireland's greatest of a fighter. Um, what, a, what a fantastic athlete. What a fantastic human being. Um he dared to be great in that last one going against the bigger man. Um going up to super featherweight, which you know he's 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 a natural super bond you with know, he's you know, I know he, he, he was tied on at the end, but still he's that says he's super bond with says. So um for him to achieve all he's achieved, you know you know you know Van Taylor's two division champion, unbelievable achievements. And you know, him as a human being outside the ring just makes it all the more sweeter. Um so I'm I'm delighted. I'm delighted for him. I'm delighted where where he's able to walk away from the sport with a good lot of dough in his pocket, his senses and faculties intact, and sail off into the sunset. So, you know, that's that's every boxer's dream. And with him having now retired, 
a you Ireland's number one pound for pound boxer. <laughs> and I don't think so, is, but not by but not by box rec, I don't think anyway. Uh, I think I was like four percent. Picture on box rec today. It's from about what twenty years it? ago. <laughs> I don't know, mate. I don't know. Um, for what, there's this, there's so much. There's there's a lot of good fighters in Ireland at the minute. So, um, I'll stake my claim very soon, and I'll be number one very soon. Male pound for pound, I should have said before. Katie yeah. team fans just abuse me. Yeah, uh, yeah, you'll get you'll get abused for that no matter what. Anyway. Deserve. Katie's the number one. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, at the moment. Um. But yeah. Um. Very best of luck. Obviously, thirtieth. We're all looking forward to that. The card as a whole is actually Cheers, really good. I think there's yeah, like three Mercedes. really good fights at the top of the card. Certainly. So, looking forward to yeah. that. One. Get your rest. Yeah. You look like you're not. Far Give on, Danny. Um. Ready. Ready to go. Ready to go to sleep. And then I'm. I'm almost on weight anyway, so I'm good. You know what I mean? I'm good. Christ,